Alright, hey everyone, welcome to Prime Comments, and this is going to be Prime Comments Rapid Fire Edition. Uh, I've already recorded this once, for some reason the camera just stopped recording after like three seconds. Hopefully that didn't happen this time, so we're going to rush through it. And uh, yeah, thanks for your comments this week. And I'm still sick, so I apologize. Uh, first comment from this week comes from the NES Classic Edition, it's coming back, plus the Super NES Classic, we'll have tons of stock. Dylan Boom Howard, this to say, given Nintendo's track record, I will believe it when I see it. Well, I don't blame you, but uh, yeah, I, I trust them. I trust there's going to be more stock of the SNES Classic Edition than anyone else thinks. Because it's not that hard for them to have more stock. So, Will they meet demand? Probably not. Moving on. Daniel Evans had a comment on the examining Super Mario Odyssey's world map, Nintendo Prime Podcast episode part two. By the way, if you want to support the Nintendo Prime Podcast, Hit up our Patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. Bunch of details there about how you can support our podcast and help support us here at Nintendo Prime. So Daniel Evans went on to say this about the Mario World Map episode. Uh, just a few facts on world numbers. Mario games have had a variety of number of worlds. Most often they've had six to eight worlds plus one bonus world. Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2, Super Mario Run, Super New Super Mario Bros. Series. Or eight slash nine plus four worlds. Super Mario Brothers Lost Worlds, Super Mario 3D World. There's also outliers like Super Mario 64, 15 stages. Super Mario 3D Land, eight plus eight worlds. And Super Mario Sunshine, seven stages plus hub. Nintendo has made it clear that the kingdoms are similar to Super Mario 64 slash Super Mario Sunshine gameplay. Which means the stages could be big or small depending on how many collectible moons they want to pack into each stage. I expect the travel within a kingdom will be nearly seamless, but there might be long roads between kingdoms. Whether this game has six stages or ten, it will be huge and a ton of fun. Super Mario 3D World was absolutely massive and beautiful to look at, and I'm sure Nintendo plans to outdo themselves again. I agree. I think that uh, right now we have like ten worlds that are confirmed. I think that... It's, it's a Mario game. We, we generally know what to expect. Eight to ten worlds. Lots and lots of fun. It's going to be more open. It's going to be more free. Uh, very good comment, Daniel Evans. Thank you so much. Let's move on. Uh, Gazenja Fox had this to say on the Nintendo Switch's online phone app has the voice chat fixed as of today, where Nintendo fixed the voice chat, made it work on your phone, whether it's in sleep mode or whether you're using other applications, something that should have been there at launch, but whatever. And Fox had this to say, stuff like Netflix and the Switch makes a lot more sense to me than it does on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One due to its hybrid nature. When those systems launched, sure, smart TVs were still fairly new, but now it's completely redundant in them since most televisions being sold these days already have Netflix and other streaming apps on them. And to that I say... You're right and you're wrong because a lot of uh, smart TVs, like I have a, a smart TV I bought from my office, uh, does not support all of the streaming apps I need it to. Um, I need to use an extra Roku stick to get all those apps. And if my Switch could support all of it, that's great. I also think there's a convenience factor where everyone would just to like like to turn on, hit one button on their TV and be able to do everything. And if that one button lets me game, lets me watch Netflix, lets me watch my cable TV, lets me uh, go to YouTube, lets me browse the internet, and I don't have to switch between different modes on my TV to do that or use two different controllers, I think that's a benefit to consumers. So I think it actually makes sense on Xbox one and PlayStation 4, and obviously Nintendo Switch. Michael Crafter had this to say on our video about the Switch in 3DS gets loads of third-party goodness video, which is our Nintendo Prime Reacts to the, how oh, was it, Nintendo Direct. He went on to say, I'll buy Doom. If I didn't already have a Switch, that would have been a reason for me to buy one. To that I say, awesome. I'm glad that third-party games are starting to convince people to buy Switch. Because uh, I think there's there's a lot of gamers out there that don't care about Nintendo games, but if their favorite third-party games are coming to Switch and that convinces them to buy Switches, that is awesome, and I hope that that's a trend that continues. It is a trend that Nintendo really hasn't had since the Super Nintendo days. Moving on. The Average Ordinary had this to say on our video about it's time for all gamers to take Nintendo Switch seriously. Uh, he said, did you get this title from Review Tech USA or something? No, I did not. I actually watched Review Tech USA video that was similarly titled to mine after I made that video. But I'll say this. I have five YouTubers that I take tons of... I mean, there's more than five, but five specific YouTubers I take a ton of inspiration from. Uh, one of those, the primary person I take inspiration from, is Philip DeFranco. I love his approach to things. I don't have the same presentation style he does, but I, I like his approach. I like his honesty. I like how he has an opinion, but he gives both sides, and he, and he encourages conversations. And I'm not exactly like him, obviously, but I take a lot of inspiration from him. Number two, Review Tech USA. Obvious reasons, our channels have a lot of similar similarities in terms of how we approach things, gameplay, voiceovers, 
uh, reactions, blah, 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 blah. Uh, whether or not you like Rich, is, is that's up to you personally. I, I can't tell you who to like and who not to like, but it is someone that I take inspiration from. Third One's Game Explained, biggest Nintendo channel out there. Lots of inspiration from them. Uh, Switch Force, love Switch Force. They are uh, one of my primary Nintendo channels. And obviously... Or, or, or maybe not so obviously, but I, I take a lot of inspiration from Spawn Wave. I think he creates excellent content, and uh, I just like his technical approach to things. Uh, he reminds me of, like a digital foundry that's m even deeper into uh, some of the background behind the technicalities with games. Moving on. Brian Shine had this to say about our trials and tribulations of pre-ordering the SNES Classic episode of our Nintendo Prime podcast. Why don't they make pre-orders fully paid three months before and get a number they need to produce to make everyone happy and take all pre-orders guaranteed money already paid for in advance so there's no lost product because they literally cannot produce enough units to meet that kind of demand. End of story. Uh, if they took unlimited pre-orders, there could be 5 million pre-orders. Nintendo might only be able to produce 1 million of them. Uh, no matter how much the demand is, that's a bad look for them. If they have to tell people who pre-ordered day one that they have to wait three or four months to get their unit, that's a bad look. Nintendo doesn't want to deal with that. Um, and yeah, so that, that's why they don't do that. There, there's no such thing. No company takes unlimited pre-orders because they literally could not make, uh, unlimited stock available day one. So moving on, uh, Daniel Evans had this to say on our, why Mario plus rabbits kingdom battle is so good episode of the Nintendo prime podcast. Uh, lots of strategy games will make you keep a certain number, a uh, certain character in the party, but when you only have three characters, it's really noticeable. Also, the difficulty spike, I didn't notice it getting harder until World 4 when I finally lost a battle. Finally, I had to use more defensive strategy, but I still use Rabbit Luigi slash Rabbit Peach. I'm worried that I won't get much harder after this, hoping the DLC has even harder challenges since I grew up on Advance Wars hard mode. Um, I didn't grow up on Advance Wars hard mode, but I have played Advance Wars, did play hard mode, was not good at it. You're clearly better at Mario plus Rabbit Kingdom Battle than me, so the difficulty spikes to you weren't as obvious. They still happened, but um, you still found it to be easy. That's good. Uh, the game has even harder modes after you beat the main story mode. So there's going to be even more. If you're seeing some difficulties in World 4, uh, you're going to see some in the extra challenge levels they have after the game is over. Post-game, Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle is awesome. So I think you're going to really enjoy it. Moving on. Uh, Sai G. Nosy had this to say on our Was I Wrong About the NBA 2K18 on Switch? PlayStation 4 and Xbox One Comparisons Video. And he says, you definitely are wrong. My PlayStation 4 buddies are impressed that the graphics and FPS were acceptable. Now they're getting switches. A lot don't game because they're at work all the time. But now lunch breaks is NBA 2K time. And just like when I said to the Doom comment earlier, I love that people are really into these third-party games and are buying switches because of it. I hope it continues. I do not hate NBA 2K18 on Switch no matter what people keep framing my, my opinions as. I am critical of the game. But uh, I do think it's fantastic. It is in my background as the game I am playing right now on Nintendo Switch. I love it. It does look fantastic. It is the most visually pleasing game I have played on Switch to date. So there is that. Moving on. Joshua Jones. By the way, Joshua Jones had a lot of awesome comments this week. Thank you so much for what you added to the conversations this week. Uh, I chose this comment because I thought it was your best one. Um, and... It, this is addressing how third parties should be treating Nintendo Switch. This is a rant I made. And Joshua Jones had this to say. Can we please stop acting like this is a new thing for Switch? Whenever there's a new console generation, the first games in a series always have bumps in the road. Madden 25 was god-awful on PlayStation 4. FIFA 14 was also hit or miss. And NBA 2K14 was a stripped-down version of the last-gen ports. This was literally the first year in the system, and it's going to take time for these companies to optimize on any console. This is very reactionary, Prime. We can't compare four years of optimization on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One to six months of Switch optimization. Like I said, there's going to be bumps on the road, and it's going to be better next year, just like every other sports game on every other system. Relax. This isn't a huge deal, in my opinion, but I've been buying sports since for 14 years. Every new console generation sports titles are bad, and the Switch's version is not bad, but needs touched up to make next year's iteration better. I just don't understand why PlayStation and Xbox gamers don't get as upset with their respective companies for bad optimization in the first year, but some notable Nintendo fans do. And I'll just explain to you right now why me and other Nintendo fans get upset about it, because there's no guarantee we're going to get NBA 2K19. I said it. Um, we have no history uh, after the Super Nintendo of, of 
consistently getting these sports simulation games on Switch. Consistently getting third-party sport in general, but specifically sports simulation games. How many years of NBA 2K18 did we have on Wii U? One? How many years did we have it on, on, on Wii? Zero? How many years did we have Madden on, on, on Wii U? One? Uh, yeah, so there's a, there, people are going to say these things about these third-party games, including me, because we want these games to do well. I want NBA 2K18 to sell well. I want people to want it. I want it to be amazing. Um, but I'm not going to try to sell it to people or tell people it's better than it is, right? I'm going to be honest about it, and that's what makes it frustrating. I understand it's 2K17 on Xbox One and PlayStation 4 is better than 2K18 on Switch. I understand that. But the thing is, we don't know that there's going to be a 2K19 on Switch. So that's where the criticism comes. That's probably also why Xbox and PlayStation people that, that cover these games aren't as critical because they know they're going to get the next year's version and the next year's version. As a Switch owner, I don't know that there's going to be an NBA 2K19. If you do, awesome. Let me know. I'd love to know your sources because I want NBA 2K19 so bad. Moving on! Corey D had this to say on the Super Mario Odyssey's file size. Has people saying bad things about the game. People don't even understand where file sizes come from. I was watching a Spawnway video where he references Titanfall 1, for example. It was 48 gigabytes, yet 35 gigabytes came from uncompressed audio files, so lower NPCs with minimum requirement processors could run the game. FIFA adds an extra 1 gigabyte per language in the game. So 15 languages equals 15 gigabytes. Not to mention Nintendo can compress games with the best of them. Super Mario Galaxy was only 3.2 gigabytes, I believe. Hell, original Skyrim was 5 gigabytes too. It's just ignorance to what takes up space and what doesn't. If there's not a ton of pre-rendered cutscenes, massive audio files, huge uncompressed texture packs, or 4K resolutions, you don't need massive file sizes. And to that I say, you're mostly correct. Nintendo does do a good job compressing. Um, nobody needs to have uncompressed files. But I also think there's a point to having uncompressed files, which leads to these larger file sizes. And that's because you want to maximize performance of whatever system you're on. You brought a Spawnways video where he talked about lower NPCs. Uncompressing those audio files also helped consoles because uh, in a lot of regards, consoles are low spec gaming PCs. So it actually helps out on the console side of things as well. So this is why you'll never see a single Nintendo game push the Nintendo Switch to its absolute maximum because it still compresses all of its files. You're, it's going to be a third party game that doesn't compress everything to allow the Switch to not have to render those files as compressed files to allow them to run them uncompressed and push the GPU and CPU to its absolute maximum, um, which is what NBA 2K18 devs are claiming they did. I don't know if they did, uh, but yeah, so it's it, it's interesting, but obviously a lot of people prefer Nintendo's approach because smaller file sizes is better for people who want to purchase digitally. Moving on. Last video of the day. Derek the Smet had this to say on his time to be thankful for the Nintendo Switch, just like Reggie fils was, was, uh, which is a video that went up today. Uh, the true test of the Switch will be between 2019 and 2020. A lot of 2018 games won't get Switch ports upon the release. So starting in 2019, when every game comes out, if Switch port is possible, it should and will be there. If those titles starting in 2019 are not there, the Switch uh, will fizzle out after the top first party games dry up. So we have to wait until 2019 and 2021 for the real fate. The inside memory problem needs to be increased and the 2 terabyte micro SD cards can't come to the market fast enough. 2018 is the N64 Classic and Netflix. 2019 is Virtual Console with GameCube at the front. 2021 is Switch Mini and Switch 2 is 2025. I disagree with almost everything you have to say here. I think 2018 is the year of third parties. We're already getting uh, a brand new The Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus. Hasn't even released on other platforms. Already confirmed coming to Switch. NBA 2K18, obviously, FIFA 18. Uh, I think we're reaching a point where if third parties want to bring their game to Switch in 2018, they have already committed to it behind the scenes. And we're going to see that happen. So 2018, I think, is the year of third parties. I think 2019 is the year of Metroid Prime and Pokemon, if, we're, if I'm being honest there. Um, other things like the 2 terabyte micro SD cards, most of you aren't going to be able to afford them if they come out anyways. They're going to cost $500 or more. So if a 2 terabyte comes out, it, it's not going to be priced uh, where most people are going to be able to take advantage of it anyways. Uh, I do agree that they need to maybe have a, a, a unit refresh for a holiday 2019 where they have at least 64 gigs of internal memory but again we'll see um so yeah uh 2018 is n64 classic probably netflix of course that's going to probably launch with their online system along with a lot of a bevy of other streaming services um 2019 this is my hot take with virtual console i don't think switch is getting virtual console i hope i'm wrong but hot take 
2021 is Switch Mini. Don't think Switch Mini is ever happening. It makes literally no sense. The Joy-Cons are already pretty much as small as they possibly reasonably can be. And uh, they're not going to make a, a version without the Joy-Cons because that literally defeats the whole purpose of the Switch itself. And I know some people will argue, well, they did a version of the 3DS without the 3D. Let's be honest, the 3D wasn't why you bought that system. So, yeah, it's it's not what's going to happen. I think a Switch XL could happen, which gets rid of the bezel and maintains the same size and has, obviously, a larger internal storage. Uh, as for Switch 2 in 2025... Too late for Switch 2. Needs to be a refresh before then. That's eight years. There will be competitors that come out that will bury the Switch if they do not keep up. Anyways, I am done. Whew. We drink that, that fine Pepsi you've been seeing this whole episode. Still sick. Not feeling the greatest. But we made it. I'm Nintendo Ruffle Dance from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. And if you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more. Hit us up on Patreon. Hit me up on Twitter. Go Pack Go. It is Sunday Night Football time. I will catch you guys in the next one.